black and white. They make the coolest prints. I found these cool prints in some quilt shops. I don't quilt, but I do make skirts. I have a great idea to use all of these. I'll show you what it is coming up. I've had these black and white prints in my closet for some of them a couple years. <laughs> I've been looking at them going, what can I make with them? This morning, it just, it hit me. I'm like, I don't know what, I'm looking at them going, I gotta make something with those. I'm like, hey, I have an idea. <laughs> idea to use all of these in one skirt. Just blow them out of my closet. I need some room in my closet. <laughs> this is in my uh, workroom closet. So I hang up all my fabrics, my favorite ones on hangers, and then I can see them all the time. And then I you know, don't forget them because some, some of my fabrics are in bins. And then I forget. I'm like, oh, yeah, but these are hanging. Going, make me, make me. <laughs> they're, they're talking to me in my closet. I have a fun idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth a try. They're just sitting there. So, my idea is I'm going to make the rosy skirt as I usually do. That is this skirt back here with the square circle skirt right there. It's a square. I've made a million of them if you've seen my videos. This is the pattern. This is a quarter of the pattern right here. This is a half of the pattern. So it's a square circle skirt. What I want to do is take out of each print I have there. I have five prints. One of them has some gray in it, so I'm not going to use it. Where did it go? This one. I like it, but I don't know. The gray is going to throw this off. So, but I'm going to take, I'm going to use each print gets one quarter. I'm going to sew them together, cut the hole out of it. Actually, I'll just already cut it. I got to make a pattern out of this and add five eighths and five eighths on each of these sides, put seams in them, and sew them together like four, and then add grow grain ribbon to the seams so that it brings the two colors together. So it'll be like right there in the seam. And a lot of times when you add a ribbon or a piping, it kind of blends them all together, uh, either a contrast or what, it kind of makes them all look like they're supposed to be there and not just thrown in there. And then I'll, I'm gonna use the black Supima fabric that I have. I have limited on this fabric because I discovered it at Joann's a couple years ago and they, as soon as I discovered it, stopped selling it because it was too expensive. But uh, this is Supima. It's like a really high-end Pima cotton and it's so soft and shiny. It's just, uh, I love this fabric. It feels wonderful. Uh, this is all I have left. I've been on the search for this fabric. If anybody knows where this fabric is at, please, please, please let me know. <laughs> I bought all of it, all that Joann's had, because this is even the end, their bolt. <laughs> and uh, then I searched the other Joann's in the country for it, and I didn't have any luck. I did find Robert Kaufman has a Pima cotton that feels pretty good like that, but it's not the Sapima, uh, but it's pretty good. So, and I found that black and white, and uh, I bought all that. But I don't know why I buy it all, but <laughs> um, I do use it. I don't know. That is a good thing. So what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, actually, when I put that yoke on there, I have this also, this double satin ribbon I was donated this summer. It has a lot of weight to it. I might use that on the yoke around to bring the colors together. And I have this cute little buckle that I'm going to maybe put on the side at the hip line and uh, connect the ribbon and make it look like a little buckle on there. <laughs> so I don't know. This will all evolve. So... I'm gonna get started. Have my pattern folded in quarters, traced it around, and added 5 8 seam allowance right here, and then a 5 8 seam allowance right here. Trace the yoke part up there, and then I have my hems. And then I put um, center front notches right there too. I like to, um, like this will be, this is the pattern when it was cut on the fold. So it's usually the, the side seam, and then I put the center front there. It's the same, so it actually really doesn't matter. But um, that 
this way this cutting out those pieces is going to be a lot easier instead of folding the the pattern so I'll just cut this out and then cut each one of my panels out so that is a quarter of the pattern with the seam allowances now my square circle skirt is going to have seams okay going to start with this fabric this fabric feels so good oh my gosh it's like a sapima and this is the selvage and then the cross grain what i usually do is tear it i actually want to make another skirt out of this there we go that way i know exactly if the cross grain is right on there see it's a little crooked so that's why you tear it and you can find if where it's crooked because you got a little piece here and then you got that one so i'm glad i tore it because now i have that exactly on the cross grain and there's enough here i'm going to make a whole nother skirt out of that i have it torn now i'm just gonna pin that get it right on there and the selvage is here i can see the bonded part here but it's my five eighths will be right there i think i'll be good the less cutting i have to do the better okay, now i have to cut this part here i think i'm going to use pinking shears to cut this one make sure these are all squared up and i have to make sure i do all these oh yeah one's going to be right side up one's right side down i'll have to really map these all out this is a good one to start with because if I messed it up, I have a lot more of it. Okay, so there's my first one. It doesn't seem like it takes a lot of fabric. So I got this one. And then I have this one. Think about the two, I don't want to go to the two bolds and then the two lights. So I think I'm going to do I'll do this because that one makes a lot of sense to go with that and then this one makes a lot of sense to go with that yeah so this will be like I mean this could be the center front or this could be the center front depends on how I twist it how I want to do it I think that's how I'm going to do this yes sides to get I should probably just get all the squares and do them all together yeah, that might confuse me. <laughs> Put them all together. <laughs> Doing this the hard way. Let's get four squares, exactly what I need here. Put them all together and then cut them. No, I have to do things the hard way. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm going to have problems with these later. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. Get this one. Now I have one half right there. It'll be interesting. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna do these are the two boldest, so I won't put them next to each other. And then this goes, these are the squares and the circles. And this is the dizzy one and the dizzy one. So I think I'm gonna do it this way. <laughs> so now I've got to cut. First, I have to tear these, get my grains right. There we go. Way through, that'll help. And then I need another one on here. See, they cut it on the stripe, but just because it's printed doesn't always mean it's actually on the grain there. Actually, this is this one's off here. This would be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to print so I'm gonna cut this one here. You see they got this cut here. Interesting, but yeah, that went off. Let's see. I have to go down a little bit deeper. Alright. Try to get him squared up without taking out too many inches. Okay, so I have to do this one. 
Well, this has some really cool little, this has little gray checks in it. That's pretty cool. Huh. It's like little tiny gray checks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Two more squares. The Cafe Faucet collection. Okay, now, where was I? <laughs> ah. For some reason, I feel like these aren't exact squares. I don't know. I guess they are. They measure that way, but I don't know. It always feels like one side's longer than the other. I don't know if it's an illusion or not. Okay, so now this goes to here. Right sides together here. So this 5 8 like that. There's my square circle skirt. Interesting. This is going to be different. Okay, I'm gonna Hopefully this all comes together. I think the ribbons will pull these patterns together. That's the hope. Okay. This is how it's looking. Oh, it looks great. Four pieces. Yeah, I figure out how I'm going to wear this. I think I'm, yeah, I just don't know. That's either the front or the back. I could also switch it to go this way, that way or that way. I don't know. <laughs> so now my next step is to put the ribbons on here. So I have the grow grain right here, the 3 8 inch grow grain, which I really like. I just love this ribbon. It's like a cotton and I could use that one. Either way, I have to go to the store because I don't have enough cotton here. And then if I do the hem with the grow grain, I'm going to do the 5 8 inch. So I have to figure out which one to do. I'm really leaning towards this 3 8 inch ribbon to go down all four seams. And I'm also thinking I might have to zigzag it right here because if I just sew it in the middle, it might poke up. So I'll do like a little zigzag. Yeah. <laughs> and this one I really like, but I think it's duller. And I'm really liking the grow grain. Yes. Okay, so each seam will get a strip of 3 8 inch grow grain. That's the next step. And now I just gotta sew this up here. I have to do each, um, I don't wanna do it in the middle, unless I do like a zigzag in the middle. That might be kinda cool. And then it will hold it down on both ends. Yes. Do that on each one of these seams right here. That will blend them all together. I have the ribbons on. That was easy. I just zigzagged them right on. Right there, you got a little zigzag right there. Yeah, 3 8 inch grow grain ribbon. Looks good. Now to cut out the yoke, attach that, and see how crazy this skirt's gonna look. All right, have my Supima cotton fabric that I love so much, I'm trying to inch out, not waste any of this. So I have to cut one here and put the next one down. And I'm gonna use pinking shears because this fabric does fray a bit. And this will just help the frustration level when I go to sew it. <laughs> so I've cut two of these, sew them right sides together at the side seams have my yoke. All right, have the yoke done. Side seams looking good. Ready to go. Hope it doesn't shrink. Not sure if it'll wrinkle. <laughs> Made it a little on the looser side so that I can just attach the skirt and make it a simple skirt. So now I have to prepare the skirt so when I get the ribbon, I'm just ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is press up the edge, wrong side up to the right side, and then when I get my ribbon, I'll just sew it right alongside there. Make sure these little fibers don't peek out. <laughs> so I gotta just press all this up, and then when I get my ribbon, it will be ready to sew. All right, back from the stores, found my 3 8 inch. I had to kind of run around and find this 3 8 inch ribbon. I found this one at Walmart. When I found it, I bought two in case I don't have enough because I couldn't find this 3 8 inch one. I guess it was out of stock. But I was so excited. I wanted to try this on 
see how it looked on the hem. So I got it on one side. So I have the four sides to do. That's on the one side there. And when I rolled it up, I had a, one of these, I think it was this one, had a lot of little frayed edges on it because I tore all these to get them right on the grain. So I had to pink it a little closer and to make sure the little frays don't peek out under the ribbon because once they're there, you can't, you can't really trim them out because you end up cutting the ribbon like that. But then I, I did a zigzag stitch. I have that on the back. So there's no like hem right there. You just, that's what I love about this hem, just rolling it up, putting a ribbon on it. And then you don't have any like hem parts, just this little zigzag stuff. So I have that side done. Then the next one I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna cut this off and I'm gonna, I think this one is a length grain. The length grains are easier because they don't stretch. So, and this grow grain ribbon doesn't stretch. So that's gonna be a little easier. So I'm gonna go around and finish this hem up. Then I can put the yoke on. Then I'll have something that resembles a skirt. And I can try it on. Okay, to get this started, I'm gonna do like a really good fold on the end. And then I trimmed it like not quite close to the edge there. Fraying a little bit there. <laughs> and then pin it just to get it started there. Make sure that layers are really tucked under. It's kind of hard to do. I gave it a good half inch extension under it because sometimes it's too small, it doesn't want to lay straight. Okay. Pin it to get it started. Right there. And then I'm going to zigzag it right in place there over my pin. Tell my students not to sew over pins. I'm going to use a tail, this little tail right here to help pull it. Get it started. Ooh, I got my needle that almost got bent. It might have got bent. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> might be bent. Okay. Ooh, got it started. And I have this on like the four zigzag. That could break at any point. I'm gonna hit my presser foot. Kind of bend the needle. You don't sew for pins. <laughs> okay, and I just get this right on the edge and just work in little short segments. Make sure it stays right there on the edge. This one's fraying really nicely. This fabric right here frays. Uh, it didn't go too much fraying. It does, and the little hairs stick out past the ribbon. So it's straight down. Little segments. So now I'm coming to the end part here where I started all this and I have to trim all this stuff. Let's get close to the end. Exactly how much I try to I'm going to pin it and fold it right there. So I'm going to give it a little extra extension. Cut it there. Fold it there. And just, yep. Get that right there. Get that in there. Turn it this way if I want to I'll get it as long as it's moving. There. Okay. Put that right on there. A little bit of black there, but yeah, all my corners are done. Got my other one hand done here. Little corners are gonna go in there. Oof. See this where the ribbon you wanna really oof. Actually it peels. That's kinda cool, because then I can actually then really go in here and trim that out without cutting the other ribbon. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, did I cut the other ribbon? Oh, I think I did. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. When I wash it, it might fray. I sure did. I cut that. I have to 
put a little bit of nail polish right there. That might help it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, grow green ribbon. Oh boy. Yeah, I have to put a little, I think nail polish right there. Well, clear, obviously. Or black. Be good. I think probably clear. Okay, let's see how this looks. All right. Have the hard part done. Got lots of hairs. I gotta trim off right here. This looks really great. The ribbons just really help the panels like coordinate, like kind of make sense. <laughs> they they uh, just kind of all come together, and then the black binding around that it just really makes it all a unit. <laughs> so the first you're like, wow, it's just like big chunks, but then it brings it all together. So now I got to trim all this up, and now add the yoke right here, beautiful black sapima yoke. And then I think I'm just going to be, I'm going to attach it and then I'm going to add a ribbon around the yoke part where the, these meet. And I found, I had that black satin ribbon, that real beautiful one, but I found this in my stash. This, I used to do a line called Race City Kids Couture and I had a lot of racing ribbons and all. I, had, I was looking for this black ribbon I had with a white on it, it looks like a road across this one and it's softer which I really like and it's like the flag you know the race flag so I'm gonna put that in between those two <laughs> and see how it looks first I just want to get these together see how they look and uh, try it on All right now I have to get the yoke onto the skirt I had to decide what can be my front and then this is gonna be my back and also it's reversible so I can wear it that way I just don't want these two as a front and back, or these two front and back. They're just kind of too different. So these are, you know, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> so now I've got to do um, put this right sides together, matching the side seam here, pin that right there, and then right sides together here. Actually, I should have tried the yoke on first. Um, sometimes it's really good to try the yoke on, even without the skirt, make sure it fits good. But uh, I use this pattern a lot, but you know, just in case. Now this, we'll pin these all the way around. Sew it five eighths right here. And then the yoke will be attached. Wow, have the yoke on. That looks so great. The black really pulls this all together. Does it make it look kind of choppy? I was really wondering about this one. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, the because there's kind of like, the prints were so different, but it's the fun of it. The black ribbons really pull it together. So that is gonna be a fun skirt to wear in the summer and yeah. So, I've run out of sewing time for today. I have to come back tomorrow with the elastic on and put my ribbon around the yoke edge here. And the hem is done, so that's all I've gotta do. I'll be wearing this by the weekend. Back in today to finish my skirt. Got this overlocked. Just put some white on it. That's what was on my overlocker. You know how we don't like to change our threads. <laughs> and got it all overlocked in here and then Overlock the edge up here and press it up. I usually line these yokes, but this one I just want it to be a light summer one. I did line it. The weight is good. I just hope it doesn't wrinkle up too much. And got it all pressed up, ready to go. And then I have my pin, my trim that I'm going to start getting pinned on. And then I just got to sew it all around there. And I'm going to sew it right on the edges right here because I don't want the black thread to show on the white so i have to get it i guess right at the edge that's going to be really hard <laughs> i can sew really well but uh that's a little bit challenging and i don't want to sew it right down the middle because then it will flap up like this so i want to get it right on the edge so i'm just going to take my time get it all pinned on here get it right on there and sew it down then move on to the elastic i got the trim on went on I got it right on the edges I think it did I did pretty good I went off a little bit a couple of those times but I think I got it on there really well 
There's so much going on in this black and white. This is crazy. Sometimes when you have a lot going on, it all makes sense. So <laughs> that's, that's my game plan. So I also, I folded up, had the edge here, and some of the stitches didn't make it all the way up onto the seam, so I put some webbing under there to keep it, to keep that seam up because I don't want it to twist up and down on there because then it would cause lumps, right? So yeah, seams are up. Now I have Okay, now to put the elastic on my yoke. I like to use this one inch fold over elastic and it comes in black and white. I always buy a lot of black and I go through it a lot. And the white's been hanging around here for a while. I'm actually gonna use the white today because this whole skirt is black and white and I rarely use a white yoke. So <laughs> I'm gonna use the white. So I put this piece around my waist got a little bit of a stretch because you don't want it real stretchy because you don't want this to pucker so much you want it to just kind of grip a little bit then i sewed it in half right there and a lot of times i like to kind of shape this up here also so that when you it goes over the fold it doesn't stick out that way so it's right there i always put this in my center back also so um, i don't like to put labels on things so i um, always just look for that seam in the center back. So I believe this is my center back and I still have a little faint crease from the fold of that fabric. And then I have this in the front. Also with this skirt, when I trim this off, I scoop this down an inch because it's like hanging different on me. So I put this down so it's not straight and I just kind of scooped it up to the side. So I did a one inch so then I know I do that correctly that means I can't switch the skirt around although I kind of could but <laughs> now I'm gonna put the elastic this way and I'm gonna make sure my elastic is out that way uh, otherwise if you go this way then you can't go around to get tied up <laughs> it just it happens a lot um, but before I do that I got to find the other half of the elastic so I'm gonna make a mark there and then I got to find the quarters the quarters will go on the side seams right there the quarters and start that again start on the center back right here and this just gets folded in half you can see the fold right there I just fold that and put my pin that's my start right there I'll just put it that way and then my quarter will go to the side seam here and then a side pin I'm gonna pin it this way because when I go sew it I'll be like oops I'll be like that and then I make sure that that gets tucked under there and then I just zigzag just like that way and then it just and I work usually in a quarter here quarter of the quarter <laughs> pull it and sometimes you can just the whole thing but sometimes it depends on how slippery the yoke fabric is I just go around and fold it in quarters Get my other center, that's my center front, I believe. Yes, because there's no seam there. Put a pin this way, I'll be sewing it that way. And then the other side is right here. Pin that way, so I have four quarters. All get gripped like that with a quick zigzag. And then this elastic will be on. Get this thing started. Just get it started there and then pull halfway. Hold that and then go there. Stop with the needle there. I'm gonna also put it on the longest stitch, the basting stitch, so that it pulls. Okay, coming into the home stretch, the last quarter. Make sure it's all tucked in. Yep. <laughs> Always end with the needle down so it doesn't move. Last one. Trim all this off. Last 
sticks in. I also did a black uh, bobbin. <laughs> so yeah, now the elastic's in. Make sure it all got in there. And now, try it on. Here it is. Wow, what a fun skirt. I really love it. <laughs> Light and airy. I hope it's not see-through. And fun. Black and white. Lots of prints. That's what you can do if you love black and white prints. You don't know what to do with them all. You just cut them up. Make them into one skirt. Love this skirt. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have made this last summer. <laughs> what fun this is going to be to wear. It's so soft and cool and fun. Geometric prints with my favorite ribbon trimming and black and white. What more could you want? This is really going to be fun to wear. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if I inspired you to make the rosy skirt. Get some different color blockings in here. Different like a black and a white and a yellow and a purple or all the primary colors. I don't know. Big blocks of color. What scraps do you have? This would make, if you just have a couple blocks of scraps and about a half a yard of fabric for the, the yoke, you can have this skirt wear by tonight. <laughs> so, hope I inspired you. Give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.